Cheers for that, Alan. So, um, as, as Alan's already introduced, my name, my name is John Salmon. I've been uh, working in the industry for the last over 20 years. Uh, background quantity surveyor. Uh, first, yeah, yeah, sound background. Um, uh, first 10 years I worked uh, for, uh, at the time there were a Bruce Shaw and now Linesight, um, worked in kind of commercial uh, offices, uh, residential, anyone that plays golf, Glen Castle, I spent a horrible year there. Um, and then uh, about 12 years ago, through through uh, Linesight, I got the opportunity to work with Microsoft, and that was my first time to kind of dip my toes into the world of data centers. At the time, we were kind of focused on the contracting side for the US program, but I started to get a feel for working for the big giant tech companies and how they operate and how they think. Uh, you're not, when you're working, coming from the construction world, and talking to a lot of the time software engineers, you're kind of translating how construction works uh, back to these people. And uh, that was the first time I got that opportunity. About two years later then, uh, a role came up on Google and I was fortunate enough to, to uh, get that. And that was uh, program controls just for me at the time, heavily focused on the cost world. When I originally started, it was, um, uh, it was kind of in the early days, but mm -hmm. the idea of program controls, for those who don't kind of understand it, basically what, how we see ourselves is provide actionable data, critical analysis and expert advice that improves costs and schedule performance. We're really there to inform key decisions and uh, to, the, to inform the decision makers and to work with our leadership to make sure that we have the best possible data and we interpret that data uh, and when we are building, a lot of the time, we like to push our decisions as late as possible within the program, which means it is constant tracking and monitoring and validating on the back of that. So we have a serious amount of software, obviously, or Google, so we're building, hopefully, most of the time sitting on our cloud. Uh, but a lot of the time, uh, it is we're providing that backbone of information and that analysis on that information so that the so our leadership can make the right decisions. Um, just to get a scale of the program. So when I started originally in EMEA, we had two probably big sites and then uh, our site here in Dublin, which would have been uh, relatively small. That program has grown exponentially, particularly in the last three or four years. It's probably the biggest growth that I've ever seen uh, on our program. But while we're all, we're still just building data centers everywhere, they are all unique for various reasons. So when you're looking at a program like this and, and you're coming from the mindset of Google, they look at us as one organization, we're building one capital expenditure. But within that, there is huge variance on what, what we are doing. Like even in Europe alone, you've got seawater cooling, uh, canal water cooling, you've got direct air cooling here in Dublin. So that's just on the mechanical, various electrical topographies, very two story, single stories. And then you put that across the globe and various uh, AHA requirements, regional regulatory requirements. Again, Europe has heavily been driven right now on renewables, uh, uh, di district heating, solar panels, all of that sort of stuff. So there is a huge amount of variance on those requirements. And so we need, but we need to align a single program a single, a single methodology through this so that we are pulling data in the same way. We're pulling it at the right level and that leadership that predominantly sits in the US can make key decisions for anywhere on the program and it has the same impact. So um, with that in mind then, just to get into the concept of what we're trying to do at any one time, we are constantly looking at our scope. Uh, again, when we kind of look at these things, Scope is the, the biggest variance. All we're doing is measuring cost and schedule off that scope. And that's from the very beginning of the project to the very end. So when I look at this, I go, uh, we have an initial, we buy a site, we go to purchase this. The first uh, indication is what type of building we're going to do there. We'll have our standing buildings and things that we utilize, but not always are, are particularly available to us at any one time. So. Uh, we may have to facilitate a smaller metro site. There'll be restrictions on that site. We need to adapt our designs. The other bit about it is 
the business wants to make as late a decision as possible as what they're going to put in there. So again, when you're Google, you're looking, you're building for cloud, but we also have our internal customers, everyone where I'm sure there's going to be plenty of talking about AI and the likes, but we're building that infrastructure as well, machine learning. All of them carry a different requirement to our builds, require different requirements. Sometimes there can be water cooling at the rack, which means that's a different config. And we want to make that decision, not 12 months or, or 18 months before, but we want to make that six months before. So scope is just one of those things that is constantly fluctuating. So we need as many tools as possible. There's another thing we need to constantly explain is there is no one tool that can do this as much as we would like. There isn't. It is a conglomerate of tools that are working and operating together. And what we need to try to do as much as possible, there's there, there's much automation, they're speaking to each other, and that flow of information that we create that kind of single sources of truth. On the right hand side, I'm just kind of it's just a long list of things because we're there for the full life cycle of our projects. So from uh, setting the initial baselines, planning, cash flow, performance reporting, right down and procurement, contract management. So this is all flowing from the same structure and the same system. Um some kind of key focus area. So as we kind of go through the overall life cycle of a project, uh, the first thing we need to do is set our baselines. And as I said to you, our scope is constantly changing. So when we set those initial baselines, obviously we won't have detailed designs. We won't, uh, it'll be a very early stages. We might even have uh, uh, geotech information. So we're setting a concept, but that concept is what the business is making a decision on. The business is deciding I'm going to buy this piece of land because I'm going to land a cloud product in that region at any one time, which means as much as we, they'll drive as much accuracy into what we're driving from that from a cost and schedule point of view uh, uh, to make that key business decision. So accuracy is, I think mm -hmm. there's kind of two competing issues. The scope is constantly moving, but they want accuracy as tight as possible, and they're going to hold us to that. So setting those baselines is critical. So from uh, and those baselines do are a little bit iterative at the earlier stages. As we go into detailed design, we pull our BIM models, we pull the quants from that. We'll have our we'll have our standard uh, uh, schedule of rates. We'll align a, a, a kind of bill of quantity baseline estimates. We'll then utilizing we generally utilize uh, P6, so it's probably the only uh, Oracle product I will talk about today. Uh, but we will utilize P6 to. Um, resource and cost load our schedules as well so that those two elements are speaking to other again cost and time are speaking to each other so this kind of moves it into report out visualizations and kind of the analysis of what that is so from once we've set those baselines we go into continuous reporting we'll set the baseline we will do what i like to consider a kind of contract back to the business we will do it for that cost that schedule based on this if you move that scope there will be movement, but then we will continuously report back to the business as well. So there is constant requirements for reporting back. Now, and I'll go into it in a little bit later, but there's various audiences as well internally. So finance is always coming from one angle. They're generally just driven by cash out the door um, and they're driven by when the cash is going to go out the door because they're reporting back to the markets while your delivery teams are purely focused on how we're performing. So they're talking more about a work in progress. If we're seeing slippages, they're looking at the schedule. They're looking at we uh, because we cost and resource loader schedules, we get a lot of EVM data, so performance reporting. So they're looking at SPIs and CPIs much more closely. But a lot of the time as well, we're we're in the background, we're explaining that data. Um, not all data is the same, and not all data is meaningful for to the same audience. So what we need to constantly do is explain what is it saying at any one time so that it can become actionable, and then we can provide actions or mitigations to those projects. We're doing that at the project level. We're probably doing that, we're not probably, we are doing it at the regional level as well for leadership within EMEA and within APAC. But then finally, there is, leadership within the US as well. And again, that is varying levels of information, varying levels of explanation up to what needs to be done at any one time. Generally, they from the, the project is probably the most important ones because they're on the front line. So they're the ones and they're, they're, it's probably the easiest because they're in the industries as well. So they understand what they're looking at more. 
the more you roll that up the chain, the more explanation needs going, the more explanation needs to do as to what it's saying at any one time. Um, so that's kind of kind of the key, but I would say the key three parts as you go through the life cycle of what we're focused on. This again just kind of runs through the life cycle of our projects. So from when we initially purchase a site, we'll have and nearly for every single box, there's a very there's a different tool working in our system that is speaking to each other. Um, when we go from estimating and we set our baselines and we pull our schedules together, we go into a cash flow mode. Uh, very much that's uh, I, at one we're utilizing QuickBase along with SAP to they they're sp uh, speaking to each other. So we're pulling the cash flow from the sites. Again, the audience from that cash flow is very very different. The audience for from a from a, a delivery point of view is they're just looking at the width, the work in progress. And they're looking at are we seeing a performance back of our cash flow uh, curves? Uh, they're just monitoring that track. However, if you're looking from a finance, you're looking at you're looking at cash out the door, and you're looking at accruals much more closely. And they're doing that because you can roll up one of our projects, which is a significant spend, but you multiply that by seventy. A small margin multiplied by 70 is a significant delta number and when you're doing quarterly results as a business and we're probably one of the we're not probably we are the largest capital expenditure within the company at the moment we're in we're where it's reflected in our quarterly results which means they're looking at that cash out the door and the pools very very closely where our delivery teams are looking at it from a different aspect. We're constantly having to explain to them any of those deltas. So it's just one of those classic ones where you've got multiple audiences at any one time. Scheduling as well, uh, because we cost and resource, we utilize P6 a lot of that for that. We'll, uh, we're able to do our performance reporting, but we also draw a lot of our payments to our main contractors from that uh, resource and cost load scheduled. So it has a two impact. And it, it kind of helps to make sure everyone stays aligned of where we, the project sits at any one time. Uh, Pyramids is generally just one of those things that's sitting on the back of it. It's utilizing the same WBS coding that we utilize to set up our baselines. Again, when we have the same work breakdown structure across our projects and across the program, it allows all the various tools to speak to each other. Uh, that's been probably the biggest um, learning curve within the business to have an alignment on one structure and um, because of the various requirements from the teams, but also getting our supply chain up to speed on that. And to be honest with you, the best way of, being, of getting our supply chain up to speed on that is it's, it's one, when the volume starts to come through and we're, it's repeat business a lot, businesses start to adjust to our practices and start to utilize our platform and uh, we need to encourage that because it's the only way it can work internally for us and then work with our supply chain. And um, we're then kind of going into the world of in the operational side. And there's a lot of tools that we utilize externally as well. So we utilize now a lot of reality capture. There's teams walking through our site. So we don't need to necessarily go out and do uh, progress reports. We let them drone deploy a lot more, which means we're getting uh, real-time data as to how a project anywhere in the globe is sitting uh, and we're working on how that feeds back into our other tools so that we can perform a level of performance, uh, performance updates and progress updates straight into our systems and update our schedules uh, immediately. So there's a lot of that stuff that's been deployed and managing the kind of operational side which uh, uh, feeds a lot of the remaining things, particularly the kind of performance measurements. Um, then change and risk itself, they're sitting throughout the project. From the minute the project is initiated, we're managing change and risk. And it's the same process throughout the whole thing. All of it, which gives us our continuous forecasts to the end of the project. And that's cost and schedule. So we're constantly monitoring both to the very end of the project. Uh, and as we get closer and closer, that margin of error gets narrower and narrower. But pretty much the margin should be pretty tight once we've got to we fixed price to everything, uh, which is which is about fifteen months out. Um, I do I do want to just point out as well. I think a lot of the time uh, we struggle. We we kind of develop out tools and we develop out um, uh, you know software, or whatever else. And a lot of it is internal looking and going. How can we drive better efficiencies and automate and get that data flow workflow working? 
we don't really think about how we can roll this to our supply chain and try to get those efficiencies right to the right to the very end. So firstly, the, the, the trick is one, getting all the tools that align to what we uh, what what any one of our internal customers wants, our delivery teams need, which is critical, our procurement teams, including our equipment teams, there a lot of them are based in the US. So a lot of our equipment is centralized and they need to be able to see what and be aware of what's happening in our schedules is aligned with our supply chain and uh, who are delivering on the site and aligned with what they are purchasing directly from our equipment teams. So they're they're looking at the at the same schedules and we therefore need to make sure everything is a single source of truth. As I've said, our finance team is also looking at this from a different angle. Uh, so they're uh, at those. Then you've got our professional services, the teams that are representing us on sites from architects, engineers, they're obviously significantly tracking once particularly once they've completed their designs any issues with that design or or and again they're looking at the same systems and the same data set that we are um the the probably the area that we probably need to do the most work is about to our main contractors and our subcontractors one getting them access to our platform can be issues at times um you know there's a bit of a firewall once you get onto the google system and particularly the system we're looking on it there's uh, so having them being able to utilize the same data uh, and, and utilize the same platform. So what we're seeing, they're seeing, I think has been has been a bit of a challenge. But I think we're starting to overcome that now. We're trying to enforce once we've decided to utilize the product or whatever it is, including the likes of drone deploy, where we are now making it freely available so they can do the same analysis of that information as we can. It helps to make sure that again we're all aligning to the sources of truth. Nobody can go off and have a version of of of, of what's actually happening on the projects. So again, that's been probably one of the biggest challenges is to make sure that our entire supply chain uh, is aligned to this. Um, so probably just a few things that I just wanted to make sure we kind of took away, and this is coming from uh, our side of things as kind of the clients. Uh, looking baseline variances is crucial. So, what at any one time the business wants to know what is the variance from what we said originally and what the team said and what we sold back to the business and how are we performing against that baseline and what are the analysis that we are giving to the back of that baseline as well to inform all the various parts. It's probably the most crucial thing and trending that analysis over the entirety of the project. The amount of times we are, um, we will change our mind. I, I, I've worked with the company literally it changes its mind on a weekly basis. Uh, it can be exhausting, but you need to be allowing for that. And if you don't have that control in your baseline, you are going to just be drowning constantly. So that's why you constantly go back, you remember you're going, that's what the impact is. You trend that and you're able to give that analysis. And uh, not all metrics are equal as well. And that, that's as much for the end user so certain data is good for certain people, it's pointless for others. And to sometimes to go, uh, uh, you will, you do need to explain that not necessarily, uh, we can give people a lot of data, a lot of analysis, and we are a heavily driven, data-driven company. And a lot of people just love to have all the data, but actually if you, you can just drown people with it, and a lot of it is not necessary for what they're trying to achieve. So what you're trying to do is parse out what is relevant and parse out what, what is relevant, what it's saying at any one time. And customizing your KPIs. So all our all our contractors have their own KPIs, will have their KPIs. We obviously have our own set of OKRs or KPIs that we set for ourselves as well. And within the company. So within the company itself, it flows pretty well. We know what our the priorities are of all our teams and we all have complementary KPIs. A lot of the time, our supply chain, we don't necessarily give them the same uh, insight as to what our expectations are. A cash flow is a really good example. We have a very tight cash flow KPI uh, set by finance, which we own as well. We don't always necessarily tell all our supply chain, by the way, cash flow is critical. You reporting back on uh, its criticality is, is important. And so that margin can, be very, can vary from what we are setting ourselves. So it's really important that we cut, we customize, and not only customize, but we, they're complementary KPIs where where necessary. And then monitoring area warning signs. So as early as possible, 
Um, well, I, again, I think the best example is because drone deploy is stuck in my head at the moment because we've kind of started to roll out in all our projects. But it's been probably the best example of us being able to, we see an issue on the schedule, we can check the, we can check the footage from drone deploy and we're seeing what the issue is uh, uh, live on the project because we're running them every three or four days. And that has been allowed us to raise early warnings much earlier than would necessarily. But there's probably still gaps in the system where we need to make improvements to get those early warning signs. Once we've monitored them as well, make sure that we are tracking them in the right logs, putting them into risks and, and, and mitigation measures or whatever else needs to be put in place. So that's probably the kind of three or the four, I should say, kind of big takeaways that I'd like people to kind of note from our perspective, what are critical to us as we as we are tracking our data, monitoring and, and uh, developing out the program. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much, John.